set. Roll cameras. Ready. And three, two, one. Welcome to Action Matters, a filmic podcast inside Hollywood's biggest action, with our host, Tate, Ellen, and Tim. Yeah. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Action Matters. My name's Tate Fletcher, I'm one of your hosts, and my buddy Tim Connolly, he hit me up the other day, and he says, hey, I've got this great idea for a podcast. We're going to go in, and we're going to talk about all things in the action movie business, everything that goes into it, actors, stuntmen. What do you think about that? And I thought, that's dope. Let's do that. And so uh, I'm sitting here now with my host, Tim and Ellen Holman, and we're, uh, we're ready to get this thing going right now. And Tim is a, a great stunt man in his own right, stunt coordinator, and we'd met and been on a lot of films together, and I've been envious and uh, also just a, a student of his for a long time, just in, in knowing all the ins and outs of this business. Now, Ellen and I just met today, and, uh, and I'm just so impressed already. I mean, I've got the most beautiful co-host anybody could ever ask for, and <laughs> the matron of the Scorpion King. <gasps> So, amongst others, you know. Oh, honey, you're making me blush here. Mm. Making me blush. Thank you very much for the beautiful introduction, guys. I am Ellen, a thespian, jujitsu junkie, and former gladiator. And I am so excited to be here with Tim and Tate to interrogate slash question our guest today. Our very special guest. Who has something to do with maybe Altered Carbon... Creed 2, Atomic Blonde, Logan, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., John Wick. Just to name a few. I've heard of a couple of those. <laughs> I'm super excited for this. So Daniel Bernhardt's our guest today, and, uh, and he's going to be coming in and uh, doing a little intro and letting you know who we are. And so... Uh, Without further ado, yeah, who drum wants to, roll. Who wants to hear us introduce ourselves? Daniel, come on in. Yeah. So before you sit, you've got to read that for us in your radio voice. Welcome to Action Matters, a filmic podcast inside Hollywood's biggest action with our host, Tate, Ellen, and Tim. Yeah. Pretty good, pretty good. <laughs> Not before. too bad for an actor. <laughs> well, who said I was an actor? <laughs> So we got to stay close to the mics. Yes, sir. Otherwise, it's just us talking to each other. Right. Um, and I, I can't tell you how happy I am to be here, man. This is like I'm a kid in a candy store here. Just, hey, we're uh, brothers, my friend. This we're is all amazing. Brothers. We've it's done amazing. Lots of shows together, man. A lot you of shows and together, been... and then back and forth. Like uh, you know, you I've been the beneficiary of you having too much work. <laughs> going, hey, why don't you run out to this? You know, you know, it's, it's actually just... funny. I think we're always up for the same jobs. Yeah. Sometimes it's you. Sometimes it's me. Yeah. And then it's also Tim. I think between the three of us. And then I end up getting it. <laughs> I know. You're so much better looking than us. <laughs> So good to see you, too. Hi, honey. So where would you begin uh, your love of film or your audacity to think maybe I could be in the film business? You know, it's really funny. Um, I really don't remember me saying that when I was a kid, but my mom actually told me when I was a kid that I said to her I wanted to be in the movie business. Don't remember. But when I was doing my studies in Switzerland, I actually worked as a side job in the movie theater. I was an usher. Just because I loved movies so much. So if you worked in a movie theater and you were an usher, you get a free pass to go see movies. That's the only reason why I did it. So I could go see every movie. Perfect. There you go. There was my love for film. Frugal, my kind of man. Yeah. How long were you in Switzerland? Uh, I was born and raised in Switzerland. Until yeah. what age? Uh, I did my studies till about 21 and then I left. Went to Paris, New York, start traveling. Ooh. Man of mystery <laughs> Ma and, and a model. Like that was new to uh, me. I didn't know who, that. Who, who said I was a model? God damn. Oh my God. For those of you just listening, that you're going to have to go and look at pictures too because it's the, maybe the most striking uh, Adonis uh, that Europe has ever created. Guys, he's literally a, a handsome Swiss bearded unicorn over here. <laughs> like he does not have a face for podcasts. Like you need to look oh, at this mug so over funny. here. I think we have something. You do? Maybe a gift. Even. So don't we some, have something? Some nasty oh, pictures. So, so Bernhardt, um, and for those of you who don't know, uh, I'm going to refer to our guest here as Bernhardt, kind of like Madonna and Jesus. It's only so Bernhardt. funny. You always call me Bernhardt. So I have I have a gift for you. Um, I, I took a photo of the poster that's hanging on the ceiling in my bedroom, and it just so happens to be. Oh my God, a that is so cool! I got the same picture in my bedroom. Is that weird? <laughs> is that weird? Oh my God. <laughs> 
<laughs> now, for those of you who, uh, who who can't see exactly what we're doing, which is, I would say, 99.99% of people listening, this is We've a- got a full nude of Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> full flexing. And it's, and it's the same- It's embarrassing. <laughs> it's the same as how I walked into the studio today. Uh, I just see Daniel from the back in a double bicep pose. <laughs> and, and if you see anybody around I can't LA- can't help myself. I can't help myself. Do you know what scene this is from? You know what? This is actually really, really funny. There's a really, really good story behind this. Is that Bloodsport? That was actually Bloodsport 3. A uh, long time ago, uh, when I started out, um, I did a franchise called Bloodsport. And this was actually the second one I did. And, you know, I was always a huge, huge martial arts fan, huge Rocky fan. And I always loved in the martial arts movies to have the training sequence. So I came up with this idea. Oh, my God, how fun would it be if I'm like in a river and I'm holding like these two animals and I have like these two, not cows, what do you call them, ox, like two oxes on each on Amazing. Each side, Wait, like baby to, ox or grown ox? Grown, big ones. Like uh, <laughs> tied up to my arms. And I'm like, oh, my God, if I do this exercise and I go like this. And then I was really worried. And I told the stunt coordinator, Chad, I said, hey. Uh, what about if they run? I'm gonna bloody uh, yeah, rip be ripped apart. apart. And it was the funniest thing. They're all standing by, and I'm sitting there, and I'm pulling, and they were old, and they both almost fell over. <laughs> I'm like, guys, <laughs> what, what do you give me here? Guys, you can't really see what I'm looking at amazing. right now, but I'm I am looking at some vascular arms right now. Uh, no, not really. I'm just old. <laughs> a podcast. You didn't have to pump before you came <laughs> in here. Know. It's a podcast. I did push-ups outside. <laughs> I know. He's been training. He's been throwing punches out. I mean, we've been watching the whole thing. The, the warm-up to this podcast has been exceptional. That's funny. <laughs> when you... Uh, when you say a long time ago in your career that you did this franchise, I mean, you've been in this for so goddamn long. How is, I mean, the arc of uh, new media coming in, the like all the different formats you've been through, it's like you were at 8 millimeter in the beginning. Like I, what? I, I think it was, I didn't feel like <laughs> it was just sketches. What, uh, at, at how many points did you go? This is, a, it's crazy because it's a crazy ride. So there had to be down points in the ride. You know, you know, I remember when I started out and I think Tim, you and I actually started out pretty much at the same time. Um, I started out, I kind of came in at the very end of that DVD VHS hype. Okay. You remember that? Like, mm -hmm. you know, mid nineties. That's when I did my first movie in 1995. It was amazing. You know, they would just literally put a picture of you on a DVD. You make a movie for $2 million, they sell it worldwide, it was amazing. And we've done all of those films and it was just absolutely unbelievable. The be one of the best times I've ever had in my life. We had no money to shoot a movie, no time. It was unbelievable, but we had fun and one of the best experiences. We need ever. more of those. I know, I know. I heard it's coming back. I hope so. I if there's enough in streaming. What form? <laughs> just doing low budget movies and just having fun. I low budget streaming. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder what the money is in that. Now, is this something that you recommend to those who do want to get in the action action industry, who do want to be uh, uh, involved in some sense, whether it's as a DP or as a director, or as a writer, or as a performer, et cetera, et cetera? Do you recommend creating your own content, getting it out there? 100%. Um, a while back, I shot my own little short. I got a team together, um, a, a little team called 8711. Oh. Probably the hottest stunt. Now, when you say a while back, <laughs> about twelve years ago. Okay. Yeah, it was actually. Um, I'm really good friends with Chad Sahelsky and David Leach, both my mentors. I love those guys. Good to give a little background about 8711 and those guys. They're uh, fantastic stuntmen, turned stunt coordinators, turned directors to the hottest action directors in Hollywood the right hottest. now. And cool. 8711 is a, a, a production house where some of the finest athletes that are in film that you may or may not know their names. Are yeah. working out and training diligently including every day, including all of us, right? Mm -hmm. To including put all of us. so it's a, it's a it's the pinnacle. It's right. it's the top. That's and actually how I know our, our dealer. Our I know, Daniel I know, I know. Yes. We've trained. We do we do jujitsu together. We train together. That we gentle train art together. I know. I love it. How many uh, times has Ellen choked you out? Uh, every time. <laughs> this, Probably every time. You do not want to get stuck in this man's guard. You will be there for eternity. You have to cancel all your afternoon plans. <laughs> <laughs> a little Terminator. But you're you're crazy how you fight. You're awesome. It's always so much fun. You know, I have a, I have a great teacher. He's a, he's a fantastic teacher. But, Daniel, you've had a career that's lasted 30 years. Most are lucky to have three minutes. Yeah. So I, I, I'm I, old. <laughs> like Chad always says, you're old. Yeah. So congratulations on lasting more than three minutes. Your wife also thanks you as yeah, well. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> so what sort of love it. advice can you give to those uh, in regards to longevity in this industry? Is it 
never give up is it keep making your own content because i know you you dusted upon that um and i'd love to to hear the end of your thought right where, does that mean yeah, writing 12, your own 12 content years ago it? with 87 what was that yes so 12 years ago um i had this idea i actually got injured i had a really bad injury and i couldn't work for about eight months i had a bad pec tear and i just thought hey what else would i do if i can't work if i can't work as an action guy as a stunt guy as an actor um and i just had this idea of doing a short film and I went to Dave and Chad and I said, hey guys, I want to do something. They said, great. I actually, I remember I had a meeting with Chad at the farm in Beverly Hills and, and he said, hey, just write something. Dave is going to star in it. You direct it, produce it. He said, I'll do the action for you. And it was probably one of the most fun times I've ever had because it's all you. Can you we to, see it? It's awesome. It's can, really good. Where, where is this? It's How actually, you, you know this? what? You can actually buy it. It's on, hmm. Where is it? <laughs> well, what, what, what can people search for if uh, they want to? We actually to? sold it. It's it's on blood, sweat, and terror. Blood, <laughs> sweat, and terror. I am it's writing a, this it's, down. Yeah, it's uh, it's a DVD. It has like eight short films on it, and Fetch is one of them. And it was so much fun. I had such a good time. And then the funny thing was, Chad did it as a second unit director. Dave did it as an actor. I did it as a director. Guess what happened? Yeah, right. It's amazing. <laughs> what a flip flop. <laughs> what a flip flop. And now Chad and Dave, like you said, became the hottest directors in the world. Yeah. They're literally the hottest directors in the world, right? So now. Not just action directors. Right. And to be more specific, we're talking Deadpool 2, we're talking Atomic Blonde, we're talking the John Wick franchise. We're Hobbs and Shaw. Shaw. Which amazing. Is yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> So exciting. Where did you uh, envision at first when you started and where now has it, are you surprised at where it's ended up? And, you know, not that it's ended up somewhere, but you're on this road now in a, in a different course maybe than you began. You know what? I've always, um, I've always followed my instinct. It's something I've always done. Have you ever turned away from film? Have you ever gone, mm, maybe I'll get a straight job? Uh, no. You've never no, had a straight no, job, I, really, I right? I did. Um, in Switzerland, what you do is like after school, what you guys call high school, um, I did what's called an apprenticeship and I became a technical engineer. I'm a drafter. I work under an architect. I designed bathrooms and kitchens and I did that for four years That's and amazing. I have a degree and uh, you know what? I did it for four years. I was 20 years old and I was like, you know what? I don't know, man. I don't want to do this. And then somebody asked me, Hey, uh, I like your look. Uh, do you want to be a model? I'm like, Sure, why not? You're like <laughs> went, went, went to Paris, worked for seven years, lived in Paris, New York, uh, Milano, London. What kind of money do you, get do you make when you just get into that business? You know what? It was actually, it was all right. It's not what you would think. People think you became a millionaire. Right, right. Absolutely not. But well, it you depends, know what? like editorial, yeah, runway, yeah, fashion. Yeah, exactly. Because There's you were so in the many, business as well, right? I was in the business for a couple of years as well. And, yeah. and it does, you would think that runway, you'd make so much money. Those girls only make like a hundred bucks a, a but do you a know show? that's one of the only businesses in the world where actually the women make more money than the yes, guys yes they do yes they like do. i was very fortunate i worked in a time i worked in the mid 80s to early 90s and they called it the heyday of male modeling it was insane it was absolutely on the tails of Fabio. It was actually he was a he was a, he was you a, were on the shoulder a, of giants. He was a competitor. He was a big competitor. <laughs> after he, was, he was Zoolander before Zoolander was a thing. But the end of it was what the Calvin Klein. Underwear. Actually, I never, that I never towards the end. Right? right, right. I never did Calvin Klein, but I did a whole bunch of other things. Marky Mark did it. it looked he like did. it made a difference. He Maybe did. he fucked up. And actually, my buddy Jimon did it. You know, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of people did. So, who but, were some of the people that you worked for? Oh, I worked for um, Johnny Versace, Armani, Dior. I did all the big shows, like you were saying earlier, mm -hmm. because I was based in Paris, and I did all the, the runway shows, and then I did all the editorial. I worked for all the Vogue's, GQ's, oh Elle magazine. What's the break you're hoping for when you're in, the, you're in the stream of that business? You're going, what's the call you're waiting for? You know, um, actually, uh, I, there's about, there's five, there were five guys who really became wealthy. I, was, I wasn't one of those guys. I was the next 20 who did all the other big jobs. Some of my friends got very wealthy. They did really, really well. I did well. What was really important to me was I could save enough money that I actually could come to LA and become an actor. And well, you don't really need money to buy food because you don't really. 
eat. You need to eat. <laughs> right. No, 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 I ate a lot. Such that <laughs> and I was actually always too big as a model. I was too tall. I was too, because I was really into martial arts. You I were perfect. A, Don't let them tell you that. Oh, no. <laughs> what? what, what? <laughs> <laughs> He's flexing again, guys. Yeah, and I'm enjoying just, it. just ask Chad and he tells you that I'm not perfect. He's like, you suck. So you got the idea of acting out of, out of modeling. Well, not really, kind of, but it, it, it happened with modeling what happened was and um i was living in new york i was a male model and a buddy of mine calls me my buddy bruce he calls hey daniel there's an audition tomorrow a famous photographer called bruce weber is doing an audition for commercial for johnny versace and the star is Charles claude van damme at the time i was a huge van damme fan you know i watched blood sport kickbox i was like oh my god oh my god that's amazing because you're also a martial artist i'm a huge martial arts geek i started martial arts when i was 15 but we'll get into that a little bit later so um <laughs> i did the audition and um bruce weber liked me and the next day i showed up on set they had like i think five or six models um and then van damme showed up and we were all super super excited and Shaw claude was absolutely cool it was right after i want to say he did just kickboxer and one of those movies. So we're all super excited. And he's from Belgium, so he speaks French. I speak a little bit of French. So we start chat, uh, chatting and he goes, all right, guys, so who knows how to kick? And I go, uh, that'd be me. <laughs> and he goes, show me. And I go, bah, bah, bah. I start kicking. And he goes, I pick you last. So that was my first introduction to film. I've never done any fighting or anything on film before like that. Wow. So I did a fight scene with Van Damme. It was called uh, Looking for Kicks. Writing for Versace, right for Versace jeans shorts. He wore a little shorts. <laughs> it was weird. <laughs> um, anyhow. Was that the weirdest job you ever had, Molly? Yeah, uh, maybe not. <laughs> there were probably a couple more. <laughs> um, so then um, everybody was kind of like, dude, you know, you, you're, you're good at this. You should do this. So I went back to New York and I thought about, hmm. You know what? You know when you have one of those things in your life, and I'm sure you've had it, Tate, and you had it, Ellen, where you go, here's a change. And I went like, this is what I got to do in life. I went to New York. At the time, I was actually living between New York and Miami. I went back to Miami, called all my friends. One, one of my buddies had a video camera, and he goes, dude, you have a video camera. And I go, hey, and we have a gym. So we go to this old boxing gym, and I'm Punching the back. I got nunchucks. I'm doing the nunchucks. I go to the beach, do the splits. Were there the ox? Sp- were there ox involved? There were no ox. Uh, <laughs> you got to work up to that. You that. need to get a production we, we budget. That. That. You start with chickens and work. <laughs> right, right. And, and I made myself this little video, put it together. It was like five minutes. And I loved the editing. I loved the whole thing. It was really unbelievable. And there's actually a really funny story on that as well. So I, I don't, I don't want to get um, off kilter here. But um, send it out. The tape got to L.A., couple of weeks later i get a call um my name is blah 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 um, i'm doing a movie called Bloodsport 2 uh i want you to be the lead and i'm like yeah that's awesome and i hung up they called back Wait, did you actually you i actually hung up hung- i hung up i thought it was a joke you know that's not how that works yeah, i right? know i thought one of my friends was just pulling my leg so <laughs> it i ca- seems outlandish so they call they call back and they go um and and they go no no this is for real we want you to come to la so I just happened to have a job in Mexico, a modeling job, and then I had a job in New York and one in L.A. So when I was in L.A., I met the producer, and it was like, just like in the movies. I show up, I show up at his mansion. He's at the pool with a big gold chain with an open shirt. And I'm like, well, You recognized really? him right away. You're like, he couldn't be anybody but that you. Sounds, that looks a little bit weird. One of the weirder modeling jobs. What kind of movie you're doing was here? It bow, 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 little bow. But that's the early 90s or late 80s? That was actually um, 92, 93. So early 90s. Wow. So they offered me Bloodsport 2. And uh, and then I was like, I got a five-picture deal. Came, oh, my mo- God. Stopped, stopped modeling. Flew to L.A. Stopped everything. The money I've made in modeling, this, my savings went to L.A. Started living in Los Angeles for two years. But actually, it took, in the end, still about two and a half years before I finally made Bloodsport. Wow. So it took a long time. That's a struggle financially then at that point. You, know, I you stopped, have I, saved a lot. I stopped working. I stopped working. And I started totally training. And you had to eat at this point because yeah. you're no longer a model. No more model. And, uh, and uh, I uh, really got into martial arts. As you know, you're a fellow Taekwondo guy like I am. You're much better than I am. Much better. Not anymore. And oh, let me tell you. So you have to ask me a question after about him. I have a really good story about him. Perfect. <laughs> I got the best story about him. 
But I um, I studied with uh, Grandmaster Heel Cho. He became my mentor. I studied with him Taekwondo, got really into movie fighting, and just, like I said earlier, it was just one of those things where it just fit. Yeah. Did yeah. you find learning, uh, was there much of a transition between on-camera fighting as well as actual practical fighting? Well, I was never a real fighter. It's mm -hmm. just something that never, I never had that interest to really fight for real. You were a fighter, right? A real fighter. Yeah, I'm not good looking. <laughs> You're pretty darn you gotta good. Be. Face you gotta be. Face podcast. I don't know, man. Thank Let's you. ask her. Thank you. You're pretty good looking, huh? Well, you, that, this is what my honey looks like with a big old beard. So I'm just, I just might be into a That's what a few years in the UFC does. <laughs> You're pretty good looking, but I've never had... Um, I just loved martial arts. Yeah. I just loved Did love, you have a love. hero like in martial arts that Bruce Lee? That's your guy. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. For yeah. sure. I was a huge, huge for Bruce sure. Lee fan. I started when I was fifteen and I remember I, I you know It's the thoughtfulness that he put behind everything, right? Everything. It's like that philosophy that he had everything. to fighting and anything that was lopsided this way or that way would be undue for him. Yeah. He he would think that that was uh, short sighted or that you were yeah. not very well rounded, right? Yeah. No, he it was it's amazing. a beautiful mind. And I'm sure all of us exactly had the same way you know we saw bruce lee and we were all like oh my god i gotta do this i was actually a soccer player. i was afraid of chinese people you were <laughs> oh, i was like they all they every they all know how to kick that ass i mean i've seen it all on tv i was terrified i was like for sure that's the curriculum of grade school everywhere if you're <laughs> for sure that's funny. it wasn't until i was 16 17 that i found out that, that wasn't true it took me a long time you guys that's so, funny. <laughs> <laughs> so would you would you say that 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 love for martial arts is what kept you going yes. in the industry before things ever procured into an actual job. I, I, I would say, you know, martial arts always kept me very grounded. You know, you were young. I was 15, 16 when I started. You know, you're crazy. You're a teenager. But I think martial arts always kept that line for me in life, and it, which was amazing. And uh, like I said, I'm a big geek. It probably became more important to you in your 20s. Than it, like, it was a different thing than when you're a teenager, I right. would think, as far as yeah. its importance and where your mind right. was. Right, right, absolutely. Yeah. Also, you know, I wanted to be a, a soccer player. I was a huge, huge soccer fan. Um, when I was a kid, I was playing soccer from like 9 to 15. I wanted to be a soccer player. Wasn't that good. What position did you play? Didn't know I was a left wing. Left wing. Didn't know I wasn't that good. <laughs> <laughs> Thought I was really good, but I wasn't. My brothers were amazing. I wasn't that good. And I was just, and then I, somebody, a buddy of mine, this guy, Nicola, introduced me to martial arts. And you know what? Everything just makes sense. What kind of martial arts in Switzerland? I started with Kung Fu. Yeah. Kung Fu, then into boxing, kickboxing. And you know, he would show me something and I could just do it. Just everything made sense. You're like a mimic. Like, like it, a mimic, exactly. Yeah. It just made sense i think did, were you always so brave and was, and what i mean by that I'm is a sissy man it is the is the <laughs> no man oh like i'm to, a big sissy to go and upend your life and and to go to paris at, at a relatively young age that's a brave that's a brave thing to do and then to go and move to well, a I, new country and to los angeles the hardest of cities i'm like a bird and new york city those are difficult oh, yeah. things to navigate i mean and that's bravery and then and then to you know overlay that like and you don't have any real successes or wins behind you that you're like yeah i'm just floating on all this you're just like i got a dream and an idea you know it's really funny that, that you're saying that there was never a thought in my head that it couldn't work out crazy beautiful never do you feel that that's what enabled I, you to fulfill that? You know, because you never, because doubt is so toxic, right. guys. Doubt is so toxic. Yeah, and that goes back to your question that you asked me earlier, uh, what I would tell people. You know what? I've, I've always had a vision. I knew what I wanted, but I, I was willing to work very, very hard, and I was willing to do what it takes. And, you know, we go to Chad's class, and it's every day the same thing. you got to pay the price, and I paid the price. I, you stick around for long enough, it will work out. And, you know, I always say life is like a tree and you follow, you follow the tree and then there's a branch. And you, if you decide to go right, but then there's more branches. Mm. So it's depending on which way do you want to go. And then but, left doesn't exist anymore if you turn exist. right. Exactly. And you got to get your mind out of the past because you got to look forward. It's about making choices and it's about commitment and about hard work. And all of us, I think, I mean, I've trained with you, I've trained with you, I've trained with you. We all work so hard. I just the, look, go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, one of the things that Chad really uh, hones in on is the only way to fake being good is. <gasps> oh my God. Being good. Being good. <laughs> <laughs> no, but so many people, they want to shortcut. Yeah. They want to look like a martial artist or they want to look like an actor. They want to, they, they spend times, they spend their time 
focusing on the wrong thing as opposed to just doing it the right yeah. way, putting in the hard yards, and it really does pay off. It, it becomes that thing about yeah. do you, like, I don't know, that we used to see it all the time at the gym. It's like there's a lot of guys that would come in that wanted to be a fighter. They wanted to be able to say, I'm a fighter, but they didn't like fighting very much or training, you know what I mean? And, and, and it's the same way as I segue into like acting and I see that there's a lot of people that like to be an actor, but they don't like to be mm -hmm. risking mm -hmm. and, and, and putting themselves yeah. up on stage and being terrified. Like they don't want to go through the process. Yeah. And what I found is that you just got to fall in love with the process. But what I'm so in, in admiration of you about is, is the way your mind is because mine comes at it from the other way about like this probably is not going to work out. I, I'm probably not going to do very well here, but somebody's going to win and I'm going to go ahead and try and I won't quit. Yeah. Like all, the only thing I, I knew at first is that I wouldn't quit, but I, it took me years to figure out like, oh no, you'll uh, just outlast people and then you'll gain some acumen after yeah. you've been in it long enough to stay true. And there, it's just like the simplest little trite phrase of stay true. But like you knew that from the beginning, which is astounding, I think. You know, I, I, I it was just an instinct. Beautiful. There was no other. I was like, oh my God, I love it. Let's go. Beautiful. Terminator. Bam. 100%. No apologies about no apologies. Uh, yeah. If I fail, I fail big. You, you know? never thought I should be doing something else or they really wanted me to be an engineer or an architect or there's none of that. Not even a question. What did your parents ever say? Anything? No. Actually, my father was always, he was kind of hard on me. He was like, oh, you're going to come back. You know what? You got to get a real job. And I'm like. Right, that real job and talk. You know, and you know what I remember? I, I started modeling. And I, the first six months were really hard. But then I had to turn every cent. It wasn't cents. It was actually a, a different currency. Some other broker. <laughs> <laughs> Some not American and it money. Was, and it was hard. It was hard. But after six months, I came home. And I never forget this. I saved $6,000. And I came home and I went like this. One, two, <gasps> three, four, five, six. Wow. And $6,000 back then is worth like $6 million now. Right. Yeah. Big money. It was amazing. And I was so proud of it. And then I knew I can do it. And I did it. You know? It's amazing, man. <laughs> it's really dope. Like one of the best pieces of advice that I've ever been given was yeah. if you want to be successful, whatever it is, you need to surround yourself with the best people in the world. At that. Like I do right now. <laughs> The best people right here. <laughs> but I've known you for what, 20, 20 years? A long time. And do you think, we go way back. Do you think you've surrounded yourself with the best people in the world? Um, 100%. I'm very, very, very fortunate. I have to say, very, very lucky um, that I, the people I know and the people I work with, the people uh, I get a chance to train with, to film with, to have as friends. And um, somebody asked me earlier if there were any downfalls or something like that. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. downturns of the business yeah. over 30 years or so of so, a career. So I remember uh, I was very, do I call it luck, fortunate? I, I know what you mean. Being at the right time at the right place, uh, I got the chance to replace Van Damme in Bloodsport 2 because I looked similar. I had an accent. What accent? <laughs> what? <laughs> so, what? What? You can kick. I can kick. I was a well, martial also, artist. Yeah, you've done all the work preceding that and to I become that. Just at the right time, at the right moment, and I was the guy. And I yep. got the chance to do Bloodsport 2, and it was an amazing experience. And then for about four or five years, I did a lot of those lower-budget movies. I uh, got very fortunate. did a TV show called Mortal Kombat Conquest, which was a lot of fun. But then that market went away. Gone. Overnight. Dead. Wow. Nothing was going on. And it was a little bit like, hmm, I'm like, okay, what's next? For me, it was just like, what's next? And um, I got very lucky. Um, I got a call from my friend, Chad Stahelski, who um, I've mentioned earlier, a big mentor, trained with him every day, uh, owner of 8711 with David Leach. I got a call saying, hey, they're casting um, Matrix Reloaded. Go in. And I'm like, oh, my God, I got a secret tip. I'm going in. Every guy I know is there. <laughs> Tim I was, was there. there. Everybody was there. But we oh walked. No, we walked in. The whole in. Rolodex and was there. We're ready. And we're like, <laughs> we've got this. We've got this. And then Daniel walks in the door, and we all went, oh. <laughs> No shit. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah. It's always that, that guy. Like, it's like, always oh. that guy. And, and, I, and the funny thing is, I did the same thing. I'm like, oh my God, no, it's a competition. So Damn. what did you have to do? I'm sure our listeners want to know, what did you have to do for this audition? Do you really want to know? I really do. Oh my God. Tell me. So exciting. Um, it was amazing. Uh, I remember walking in. I saw Tim, Brat Martin, and like everybody was there. David Leach, 
everybody was in. And I remember uh, we did the first audition, and if, if I'm not mistaken, it was just one page. Yeah, what was it? It's him. He's here. No, it's him. No, no, no. It's him. He's the anomaly. The anomaly. That's he is it. still <laughs> only. That's why human. you got it. <laughs> I can't believe Tim Agent Johnson. Doesn't remember. <laughs> what is it? It's him. The anomaly. So wait, wait, wait. Your character's name is Agent Johnson. Johnson. Yeah. <laughs> so did you? Okay. Did you? It's been a while since I've since I've seen it. Approximately uh, well, twenty years. It's on Instagram. It, it's been about twenty years. So would you say that your character grew over the course of the film, or did he? peak early and then roll over and go to sleep and not call in the morning. That's what he was. <laughs> That's exactly what he was. <laughs> so Agent, Agent Johnson is the kind that will make your mother cry. Yeah, you know what? Now that I'm thinking about it, hmm, I wonder why they called me Agent Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> I never thought of that. My uh, mind never went anywhere but there. <laughs> Damn. I, I'm so slow. I'm so slow. You know, the coolest thing about that, the... the I don't have any uh, interaction with the Matrix at all, yeah. except for you guys, and uh, and walking on to John Wick, and and there's like we worked on John Wick together. There's like eight guys, eight yeah. of you guys are all from from Chad on down, and Darren and everybody there, and it's like this reunion that and Darren was so st he was giddy about it, like all his bros that had been on the fight team and that uh, the whole deal all through that had now come to pass. On this show, John Wick, which was then to become the biggest show ever. I mean, it's got to be—it's got to be the best franchise going ever, ever. really. Yeah, ever. And uh, I mean, like, it's like the—it's—it's it's Matrix powerful. It's yeah. like that powerful. It's Amazing. like you Gun, know, there's Gun Fu, Gun Fu, and uh, it's like invented. I it, just think, what a special goddamn thing! It's so cool. It, it, I mean, it was amazing because that was the first John Wick, right? And we're sitting there talking in when we're doing the, the that ballroom, the ballroom, fight, that gunfight the at the bar, and, yeah. 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 And it's the whole Matrix fight team is now shooting their own film. Yeah, amazing. It was amazing. It's just unbelievable. It's like you're and like I don't know. For me, like I'm a kid from Michigan that ended up in the movies, and it's like it's just a wild, wild thing to be like, wow, here's all those guys, and you're here, and you're kind of a peer of them now. At this, it's it was a trip. You had man. a great scene. It was I beautiful, was beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. The whole thing. You know, to jump back to Matrix, so I remember walking in, saw Tim, saw Brad, saw Dave, saw everybody. We're like, damn, look, everybody is here. Good. <laughs> so we did the audition. Then um, I got lucky. I got a call back. So I met the directors. I had to do it again. And I remember them saying, do it again. Do nothing. I'm like, blah, 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 blah. Do nothing. Less. Blah, 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 blah. Less. I'm like, damn. It's a lot of less. <laughs> damn. Wow. Less is then, good. yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, then I got a call. All right. They liked you. Now you have to meet Wu Ping. Because Wu Ping was, was the fight coordinator who choreographed all the fights. And he had approval of cast, the mm -hmm. agents. So I had to go in and, and do an, a demonstration for him. How did you feel? Were you, were you more nervous about the nah, physical audition no. or the, the direct? Oh, no, no, 100% always acting. I was always, uh, because I wasn't an actor. So when I came to LA, when I got Bloodsport 2, I went to acting class right away. I've never acted before. So, right. and I'm, you know, I spoke English, but not that good. I couldn't right. read English. I right. spoke English, but couldn't read. So when I got my first script, couldn't read it. So I had to learn how to read English. What an incredible challenge. Yep. That's a, that, and, that's an, And you know how incredible. I did it? Reading Stephen King books. Wow. Yeah. That's how I learned how to read. How did you learn to speak English? Uh, Paris. Yeah. Yeah. Just on the streets. Yep. Just everybody spoke English. I spoke French and German. It's a bizarre place to learn English. But hello. <laughs> <It's wild. laughs> hello. Like us. My name is Daniel. <laughs> uh, je m'appelle Daniel. No? Guten Tag. Ich heiße Bernhard. Ich bin Daniel Bernhard. <laughs> ja, du bist. <laughs> we like to talk smack to each other in, in Always. German when we, when we Always. spar. Yeah. That's I'm what teaching that is. Some, I'm, <laughs> that I'm teaching her some naughty words, oh, which we cannot yes, say here. Yes. Some naughty <laughs> words. International market. Yes. Rated R. Yeah. R, some, R. So, but can I just share one really good Please. story about Mr. My dear, dear friend for many, many years, Tim Connolly? This is the best story ever. Uh -oh. And I only, I only heard that probably maybe 10 years after or maybe even 15 years? It may you, be 15 years. Maybe you yeah. told me this like just a couple of years ago. So here's what happened. We're training. I got the job in Matrix Reloaded to be Agent Johnson, which was incredible. And actually, there's another really funny story, which I'm not going to go into right now. It's a really funny story, but I'm going to tell this one first. Um, so um, 
I'm training with Wu Ping, with Keanu, with Lawrence Fishburne, with everybody, with Hugo Weaving. We're training every day, six, seven hours with the, with the stunt team. And it's all amazing. Um, we're totally overtrained. You guys were doubling Agent Smith. Yes. Which is really funny because they all had to get this really funny haircut. <laughs> which is, and they really cut our hair. There was no cheating it. They wanted everything so perfect. And we had these. Oh, it was miserable. Oh <laughs> they all, it, was, it was so funny. Because they have to wear, the, you know, uh, Hugo has the, what do you call it? Uh, the receding hairline. A line. little bit. Like and a widow's peak type. Exactly. Yeah. And they all have to actually shave their head to put the wigs on. It was hysterical. And we were all young with a full head of hair. And the and last thing all we want to like, do is... And they're all like excited, you know. <laughs> so, um, totally overtrained. Training every day. Five, six, seven hours. Totally hurt my groin. Messed up my groin. Couldn't kick for three days. Did something really stupid. They Agent Johnson cannot perform with a, uh, with a disabled groin. groin. Hey, no. no, he's totally messed he's up. He's no my longer groin. Agent Johnson. Top. Notch. So I'm taking like two small days. Small J. Yeah, small J. <laughs> so I'm taking like two days off. And um, so Chad, who was in charge of all of us, and um, he told, was, Chad was in charge of your overtraining. Yes. Okay. <laughs> no, so I just want to be clear. Just, clarify, just want to be clear. Just to clarify, not in charge of yep. your groin. Sorry, okay. Chad. Sorry, Chad. Um, so he tells. Tim to pull me aside and just work with me slowly. So Tim, as humble and nice and good looking he is, he pulls me to the side. He goes, oh, let's do a really light training. Um, we put on these ankle weights and Tim is probably the best kicker I've ever seen in my life. Incredible. Former Taekwondo champion, Olympian. Not, I mean, not brought, any- brought the 720 back to America. When, I mean, it's like that. That's Insane. That, and, <laughs> Yeah, absolutely insane. So he puts like these ankle weights on my legs and we start slowly kicking and doing all these exercises. My groin is feeling bad, better. And then he goes, all right, Daniel, so um, here, uh, why don't you hold this pad for me? I'm like, okay, great. So I'm holding the pad and I'm looking at him. And before I know it, he throws a kick and I'm just speechless. I've never seen anybody kick faster in my life, kick harder and with more control. And I'm just speechless, just standing there going like, master teach me and i'm like bowing i'm like oh my god and i'm totally flipping out i'm like that was amazing and i'm a pretty good kicker but he was just way beyond anybody i've ever seen he put in some reps oh my god oh my god <laughs> he's, done, he's done the tie bow he's done the i tie mean bow. Th- it was just incredible so i'm like dude you got to teach me so we start training a lot together now cut forward 15 years later we work we're, we're both older now we're at 80, 70, 11 training, and he goes, yeah, that was really funny what, what we did back then. I'm like, what do you mean? He goes, well, you know, you know, Chad told me um, to really, I have to show you how good I am, otherwise you wouldn't respect me. So Chad, <laughs> which I didn't know about. So Chad told me, he goes, uh, Tim, when you train with Daniel, you really have to Amazing. show him how good you are because he will not respect you. And I'm like, whoa, 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 what? <laughs> like, now he's like right out of the gate. He's like, so Tim, I want you to work with Daniel because... He's actually a really good kicker, and if whoever's working with him can't kick better than him, he's not going to respect it. So, <laughs> that is so. He, so you better give you better give him something. That's <laughs> real, dude. I, I'm telling you, he started throwing kicks. I was just speechless, <laughs> speechless. You had to make sure your hand was still attached to your body. I was like, but you know, I've never seen anything like this. You know, I mean, there's a different level. I do it for fun. I was never a competitor. There was just, it's like. Me driving a car and then Nikki Lauda driving a car. Right. So it, it, it was that different. So in regards to people who are inspirational, I know you've mentioned several names here. Are there any any other actors out there who whose careers you you also highly respect? Or, or uh, I know that you mentioned a, a couple earlier. Um, but there's a, are there any to mention that that you really wanted to wanted to be like? I was always a big fan of um, old movies. Oh, okay. I was a big Paul Newman, Cary Grant, Montgomery Clift fan. That was always my thing. I could totally see that. You know, with like you. older. I could totally see that with you. Um, I always thought the older films had so much class, so much style, and the men were men, and they were like, I mean, look at Paul Newman. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. It was just that was kind of like the time that I. It's funny. <laughs> you totally, guys, he totally looks like... Oh, uh, well... Uh, <laughs> he totally has that going That was going kind of on. my time. But then, you know, um, more modern films. I, I was a huge Van Damme fan when I was younger because I was a geek, you know. Bruce Lee. 
I mean, I was 15 years old in the kitchen with the nunchucks, whacking myself in the head. Uh, and then later on, I would say, I'm just, I'm just very lucky what I do. Inspired mm. by film, martial artists, by everything. What do you like outside of film? I'm a very passionate photographer. Yeah. Very, very passionate photographer. There was actually a time before um, I got into the movie business, I wanted to be a photographer. And I actually got my book together. I was ready to become a photographer. Really? And then how life just changed. I just got this opportunity and I just grabbed it and ran with it. And But I still do it. I mean, I shot I shot you. Yeah, my head, my current headshots. <laughs> Is that right? Yeah. Oh my gosh. You look great in that. You look like uh, Superman. Superman. <laughs> you do. <laughs> I just love photography. Um, I'm a very passionate filmmaker. Uh, I want to definitely direct. I mean, Is that like what I, you'd, like, like, I, you'd like to go back into? Yeah. 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 I just action directed something, uh, a little short that I did. Um, I just, I, I just love, love, love our business. And every day I can be on set is a good day. And I keep telling people when I work, I don't work. Right. When I don't work, so then I work. I'll work. It's, I'm on the hustle. So I got to interject here. Okay. Because you inspire me Aww. always. Aww. So like when I'm on set and, and, and we're, we're 20 plus years in this business, yeah. right? You know, yeah. you're close More. to 30 years. Yeah. You know? And it's easy to get jaded and just, it, just mundane yeah. because sometimes the business is busy and exciting and then days you're sitting around doing nothing. But I'll tell you, every time I see him on set, no matter what we're doing, if we, if we go on, if we work on set tomorrow together, it's like his first day on set. Like, and for me, that's infectious to it watch there. Right. It inspires absolutely. me because he's the guy right there. And just like, it's so exciting. Can I do? Put me still. In couch. And it, you know, 30 years in the business yeah. and you're still like, it's your first day on I set. I love it so much. Love it, love it, love it so much. And I, I talked about that earlier. Um, I kind of grew up in the business in a time when there was no money, no time. We made movies for a million dollars, two million dollars, four weeks right. of shooting. And I swear to God, I would be shirtless on set, doing a fight scene, doing it. The second they say turn around, I would grab the lights, run to the other side, right. help them turn around so we could get an extra shot. And we did those films with Brad Martin, Chad Sahelski, David Leach, all the guys, you were there. Jojo, everybody was there, and, and uh, even uh, JJ, everybody was there. It was so much fun, and we didn't get paid. We didn't care. Right. We made a little bit of money, enough to live, but it was so much fun. And you know what? That's because how we work today. Yeah. That's the reason who we are today. You Do know? you feel also that by understanding how every cog in the wheel operates, it, it, it garners more of a respect for what you're doing? I find... <sighs> Something I find just a lot of times with, with performers is they just stick to their small myopic circle, mm -hmm. such as the actor just sits in their chair. Uh, the grip does their grip stuff. The DP sticks to his thing, as opposed to understanding how every aspect of it works. Because it's, it's, a, it's a delicate balance. It's, it's a circus, really, what we do. And when you start out helping out with the lights or helping out with the rigging or whatever it is, you respect everybody's department and you also know how it works. 100%. And that, that is, that is also because you see how this, this circus turns into this, this hopefully beautiful performance that you had, you had something to do with that right. in every aspect, right. which is where the respect. I was also always told by my old coach, um, if you, if you're an actor, right, it will make you better actor yes writing will make you a better director directing will make you a better actor producing will make you a better writer it's all connected mm. and you got to try a little bit of everything and then you see where it clicks and i i tell you i as long as i can be in the movie business i would do whatever it takes some films like sometimes you call me tim you say hey daniel can you be a stunt guy i'll be a stunt guy then so chad calls me hey do you want to act in a movie i'll be an actor in the movie then somebody calls me say, says hey do you want to be a fight coordinator I'll be a fight quarter. Or hey, can you make me look like Superman? <laughs> I can make you look like <laughs> Supergirl. Can you make me look Supergirl. like Superman? But I'm sure it's the same for you, Tate. You know, mm -hmm. you, what, you're a great actor. We've worked a lot together and we're always up for the same job. Sure. Sometimes I get it. Sometimes you get it. Do they want the more good looking tougher <laughs> guy? That's you. Uh, or more the isn't that sweet? haggard, older, Bearded little unicorn. wrinkly guy? That'd be me. <laughs> What do you, when you said, like, uh, I know a lot, I get this question a lot, and you said, you know, working 
is that's the freedom, right? When I can just relax and right. I, I'm, I have my purpose and my purpose is bought by these people and I'm going to give them the best product that I can and my mind is there. And then when you're not, that you're hustling. And a lot of people ask me about that. Like, what does that look like for you, this hustle? I'm the best. Uh, because we all say that, right? I'm the best. But people listening have no idea about I'm what that the looks like. I'm the best. Hey, Tim, how's it going? You're back in town? Oh, yeah. So I'm around. If you need somebody, hey, listen, you don't have to pay me. I'll just come around. I hang out. I'll be a body. If you need me, just let me know. But, like that. But Love your that. Rolodex is surrounded by the best people How did you the get business. your Rolodex? <laughs> Sticking around. Sticking around, Sticking around. And you know what's funny? Uh, 87 to 11. You know what? Like, <laughs> like I said earlier, when I had that injury, when I did my yeah. short film, um, I kind of realized that the low budget industry came to an end and I had to change something. And um, I've always, Chad said to me, he goes, you're an action actor. I'm like, hmm, that sounds really interesting. Action actor, hmm, hmm. stunt actor. Right. I call myself a stactor. Stactor. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I said, hey, Chad, I want to come and hang out to Chad and Dave. And they're like, sure. So they invited me to come to 8711. But I put myself right on the same level with all the guys. I start carrying pads. No special treatment. I'm one of the guys. And that was really important. You got to be one of the guys. And, and then they start plugging me in. Hey, you know, he can act. He's a tall guy. He can kick. And then things just start to happen. Humility is so important. It is. So important. Yeah. But I was very lucky, like we said earlier, I'm around very, very strong people. They made me better. And without them, I tell you honestly, I don't know. I may be somewhere else. Did, did, <laughs> For sure. Did, did you find that, that that was a hard transition from strictly acting and being number one on the call sheet to doing stunt performer and anything? Absolutely How was that not. transition? 100% not. To me, it was always about the mission. And I never... Um, I mean, I, I, I was never really acting. Basically, I did exactly the same thing. When I started out, I was, a, so think about this. I was a martial artist slash model who started acting. But I did all my own fights, right? Then I became a stuntman who does his own acting. Right. Hmm. <laughs> It's, it's the just, same. It's just dang. Yeah, it's, it's the same as it's my a nice little. Thing. It's a nice little niche. Same for you. Yeah, I think it's the same thing. yourself, myself, you, Tim. We're probably three guys who get called for a job, and depending on who they like. Yeah. It's actually you quite know? interesting because uh, my husband is and a stuntman. Yeah, it's hobby, Stephen Dunleavy, yeah. who's worked with all of these yes. handsome gentlemen here. Um, that's actually the reason why I've, I've been training at 87 for the past couple of years. It's interesting as uh, uh, being an actress. It's and, and and not a stunt. Person. You're more than just an actress. <laughs> I think you're a stunt actress. Uh, yes, uh, yeah, former former gladiator. Yeah, as well, or maybe know. a fight actress. Yes, yeah, factress. <laughs> factress. <laughs> we'll think of a better name. Factress. I don't the know. Factress. <laughs> factress. Something like that. But just uh, the opportunity to learn from you guys in that world. And um, going back to the humility standpoint, it's like, okay, if if the the mats need to to be cleaned or or vacuumed or you know scrub the blood, sweat, and tears. We do. Off. Yes, I'll oh, do it. I just did it yesterday. Especially when the dogs come on in. Yes, <laughs> every Saturday we we have a private role, and the, yeah. and the dogs and Chad's dogs come in. And it's like, okay, guys, off the mats. We need to vacuum it up. It's 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 keeping that humility. We all help out. And it's not just what you know; it's who you know. Yeah. And it's not in like, oh, you have to kiss ass, which I yeah. just refuse to do. Yeah. It's show up, do the work, do the work, and and just be a good person. Don't be a dick. Yeah. If you just stick to those fa the, those those elements and and you continue to improve yourself, you'll have a career yeah. that spans yeah. thirty years. Yeah, and everybody's different, you know. Not everybody has the same path, and I think that's really important to know. Everybody has a different path, and like I won't have the same path as you. I won't have the same path as you. Everybody has their own, and you got to be truthful to yourself. You know, you found a great way. You found a great way, and I think we're all very very lucky how well we've done in the business. Yeah, it's it's in, it's interesting because it's just like not dying right right it's like it's i mean people ask about well, how to do this or that or and a lot of it's just like you know you said oh i was lucky in a couple of positions yeah. or, or whatever and, and then struggled with that term because of the reason is that, it luck right is it all that luck all the work the prepared. yes so there's there's all that but like i feel like the uh the luck the luck as it were was you know of your making for sure and then also the just the 
the fortune isn't all just happenstance. It's it's your awareness that yes. you bring to it. Yes. And so you're there with your eyes open. It's like, you know, opportunity comes to us all. Right, right. But not all of us are aware that opportunity comes to us all. Yeah. Right? And then at the end, there's that little bit of luck where there's maybe sure. the last five. And then maybe you're the guy. But that's also in the universe. You know, are you the guy today? Maybe not tomorrow. It's just yeah. like you said earlier. You always got to be ready. Mm-hmm. Be there at the right time, at the right moment, and be prepared. And then a little bit of luck. And also I find that, uh, and it's also going back to what we were saying earlier, don't go for the shortcuts. Don't. No. The, the, it's not the schmoozing and the boozing and the, and the, and the ass kissing and the Hollywood parties. It's like, no, you, you can't flirt your way. To Guess seen a lot, I've seen a lot of people that do the, the schmoozing and boozing yeah. that just burn them. So there's yeah. no career there. There's just sadness zero. at the end of that road. Question. How zero. many jobs have you gotten at a party? Yeah, right. Nothing. Zero. Nothing. I have you? no social life. I don't go to Zero. parties. Zero. Yeah. Yeah. I, <laughs> I know your husband. He's in bed by 10 I'm, o'clock. I'm married and just bought a house. I know. I, I know. have a negative yeah, social yeah, life. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's the thing. Yeah. Never, ever I got a job at a party or it's always hard, hard work. I, I think it's it's also like not the end, right? That's, it's not the result that I'm looking for in this life. If I'm looking for the result, I'm kind of going about it path, a backwards way. The path. I need to go, I need to fall in love with the process. Yeah, 100%. And, uh, and in that process, there's fruit. And at the our, end of that, for our sure. process is so much fun. And it's fun. so fun. I mean, that's the <laughs> so thing. So much fun. So that fun, yeah. fill, yeah. fill us in. It's What's fun. that fun for you? Every, What's your definition every of the morning, process and the prep? 7.30, oh. judo oh. at 807011. And, you know, I have a very dear friend. His name is Tim Connolly, <laughs> who um, we trained together at 8711 many, many times. And he sends me this email and he goes, I want you to read this. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember that? Yes. Um, because he sees me at 8711 every day, five hours. I'm just haggard. I'm tired. I'm beaten up, beaten up. I'm hurt. And I get this email. Um, how to train when you're in your 50s. <laughs> <laughs> we are. We're in our 50s. We are. Amazing. I'll be 54 this year, my friend. We're aging like a fine wine, I know. But, but how it's is, different at 50. You know what? But it was actually a very, very good advice. And I remember I went to the chiropractor and I read it and I go, hmm, he is absolutely right. So now we call it old man judo. <laughs> So when we go in, Tim and I, we do our judo. So instead of doing 50 throws, we do four and a half. There's a little dialogue a, between throws. We talk. <laughs> we just do the motion. I suppose, though, when you've lived that long, you've got to understand in a movement that it, it takes, it's probably more verbal for, it, you, for yes. you guys. 100%. But it has it's also, nothing to do with not wanting to hit the no, ground No, but it's, at all. it's the impact. And, you know, after hitting the ground. And, you know, look, a lot of my friends like Tim and you – are super talented stunt guys, actors, but you're a little bit more a stuntman than I am because you've done bigger gags. Like I started hitting the ground in my late forties, which is probably not the smartest thing to do. And I remember it, when you came into eighty seven and you're like, I, 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 you were you were at the crux of going. Yeah. Oh, I went this route and and but this route looks really inviting yeah, too yeah, and yeah, all yeah. that. Yeah. And and you know I, I started learning. They're like hit the ground. I'm like okay judo wow. Boom! And I didn't know how. I'm like, it's the worst. Damn. It's the worst. And we're big guys. Yeah, I mean, it's the worst. I'm 200 plus pounds, and that's a lot of. All I want to know about judo is how you don't throw me. I'm just going to control your hips. Like, <laughs> I don't want. I don't want to learn how to fall oh, well. Yeah. Oh, like all wrong. that. That was my first interaction with judo. I was like, mm, that looks horrible. I know the falls are not. So, so to his credit, though, like you started jujitsu when you were what age? Uh, I was in my 20s. Yeah, so yeah. a while ago. Yep. I started jujitsu like. 20 years ago yeah now, right so and i was flexible at that point i'm not flexible anymore he started jujitsu like what three years ago three years ago yeah, yeah. and i remember he first got into it he's like oh, i don't know about this and then pulls his groin right away <laughs> oh right. you i remember you and i oh my you're moving in different ways would, and would the you pressure say, and counter pressure he pulled an agent he pulled johnson agent johnson but i like you. that <laughs> full circle guys full but circle. you know what it wasn't pretty it was there was a pop yeah and i, I did I it mean, turn it, black yeah. yeah, it was oh. like it, it was like this, bang, and he went like, "Oh my god!" And I went like, ah! <laughs> "Where's the ice?" <laughs> That's Upstairs a tough deal. So he, how, that was his initiation to yeah. jujitsu, and you've uh, then altered your training. Yeah, but you're still. I mean, I fell in love with jujitsu. It's like no bullshit. Yeah. You're every bit of this picture right now as you were 
30 years ago when this picture's really? taken. I mean, Less wrinkles. so what have you done <laughs> to maintain an injury-free body? You know, and what do you pay attention to in particular? Um, because you've got longevity that most people don't have. That's a really good question. Like Tim, like Tim said, um, you're past 50, you gotta train differently. So right. what, I, what I'm doing now is, all my training is basically rehab. Everything I do is rehab. Because you know, bad shoulder, bad neck, bad knees, just kicking for 30 years, 35 years, you know, there's damage. So what I've learned is just do everything less. A lot of ice, a lot of rehab, learn how to train differently, and just take it a little bit easier. And maybe when, when you're younger, you have to prove more. Mm. And maybe now it's just like, ah, eh, I don't have, eh, it's okay, let the young guys do that. Right? So I have a question for those who are not quite 50 yet. Yeah. <clears throat> <laughs> uh, there may be Roman, somebody Roman, there may be go. somebody older than me here <laughs> so for those of us who are not 50 yet uh i'm in that that uh, pool but you're in your, here. you're like 25 oh or God, you look I like just, 18 I just, I just keep getting younger keep yeah. going honey keep oh going. you look amazing um so thank you my sweet uh so what what advice would you give to your younger self to take care of yourself because you see these young hot shots out of the gate and they're like i'm gonna go again i'm gonna go again go again and they they don't warm up they don't stretch they don't cool down yeah. is there anything that you would have done just what differently? you said just exactly i mean i've always stretched i'm still i'm actually still flexible <laughs> I you still are stre i stretch I every day yeah. still can do the splits um what i would have done different if i could go back start jujitsu earlier because i love jujitsu mm -hmm. and probably aikido learn how to fall Right. That's what Chad always told me. Learn how to fall, because if you know how to fall, and you, you're a good fall, right? I'm, I'm, From I'm, I'm able to the gravity. I'll just let the gravity do most of it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. See, I'm not the best faller, but yeah. mine look really good because I really fall. Yeah, because it's an actual wreck. <laughs> it's a yeah. it's a wreck. It's a, <laughs> God. Well, well, let's explain to the audience what you mean by fall. Well, okay. and also what a, a wreck, because yeah, you'll see wreck. guys that have beautiful aerial awareness, and they'll be like. No, we don't want you to fall like a gymnast. We want you to fall like, like you've you been hit by a car or whatever. Yeah, exactly. And so, you know, there's the guys that are great at ugling up falls. And then there's some of us that are just good at We're being falling. ugly and you fall and that looks horrible. I would be that guy. Yeah. I'd be the ugly guy. But and the, there's others who send their doubles in. Yeah. <laughs> yes. But the difference between that and to really, when you say fall, can I fall, is can you make it look ugly? Right. Like people just go, oh, that yeah, hurt. like a hard wreck. But be able to do that multiple times and not injure right. yourself. Yeah. That, that's knowing how to fall. And exactly. that's the exactly. responsibility to the craft, I think, too, because you get into a position where you tell your boss that you're able to do this. And then if you're not able to do it well enough to not be injured, it, there could be an argument made that you're not the guy for the job. Like, because there's guys that can look horrible and can do that all day because they've got great body control. And, and then, you know, you can mitigate your injury to some. Chad always told me, if you can't do it, tell me. Yeah. Don't hurt yourself. If you get hurt, I'm screwed. That's a huge. Right. And he looks bad. That's beautiful. So you cannot get it. I mean. That's it, uncommon. I mean, I, I say it's beautiful because yeah. our listeners, that's uncommon. Yeah. There's not a lot of guys that have that kind of care and consideration. Well, there's also I mean, so there many, are a lot of guys that do, but there's not yeah. all of them. It's not all of them. And there's so many directors out there as well that <clears throat> It, it is interesting, and this is actually an article that uh, an interview I just read recently that Chad did to pro, uh, for promo for John Wick Three, is that there's so many directors out there who separate the action from the rest of the film. Mm. And he said, if you don't know how to do action, you're not a director. Think about it. It's ninety percent of the films out there have some elements of action. Every trailer in there, yes. So it is fascinating to me how people would separate the two because it's they 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 marry each other and a lot of times directors have zero concept of how to look after their their action performers look, look after their act their actors because a lot of times we were taught the choreo a lot of times there's been times where i haven't even had a double um so i've had to do a lot of the the material as but well you're so good well it's you know kind of back to what you were saying it's <laughs> it's you have to understand that a, a, a fight sequence as you know it could be a minute 30 seconds on screen but that could take you Five days, days to yeah. shoot it. Five days. So, it, what it's, kind of movie is that you're doing? The, the, the fights is a minute and a half. A lot of uh, a lot of rigs. Two Aven hours. Avengers. A lot of yes. A lot of blood resets. Rigs. All that. You all get that. Two hours that. to shoot that fight scene. But have you ever had it where there's a director that's like, oh no, go again, go again, yeah. go again, not even realizing this person. This is a human 
whose body is hitting the ground over and over and over. That and takes a stunt coordinator that says, every time he hits, it's going to be another bump. Adjustment. Just so you know. Money. And a bump, a bump and for And you got to speak to the money. <laughs> the listening yeah. is an adjustment but, financially. But that's a big part of it is in the action is having the right stunt coordinator and, and having a director that understands the action. Because some of the wrecks, I don't care how good you are, <laughs> Her. it's taking a toll on the body. That's and, and you got to step in and go, look, I can't have my guy do that again. So... Right. Do you have it yeah. or do you not? Right. Because we got one are more we try. experimenting? Because there are directors that like to experiment too. Oh, can I do one and it's more? not always the time yeah. for that. And, 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 yeah, it's just, and when you, like you yourself, you're in your 50s now. It look amazing, by the way. I would have never guessed that. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. But it, it, totally you've got to monitor what you can do. And a director has to know how to watch yeah. his guys if you don't understand the action it's like you don't understand the damage that does to the guy like right they, they don't it, it, it's really fascinating <clears throat> have you ever been put into a, a position where you felt like you were in danger what was the the craziest shit you've ever done um i remember uh i did a film with uh, jason statham and david leach was the action director and the director was i just forgot his name right now damn i forgot <laughs> um i was doing a high fall how high? Uh, three hundred feet. Oh, wait. That's but not I was on. A I was on. I was on a descender. Okay. That's jumping off a mountain. Yeah, I was at twenty uh, seventh floor, and I remember. Um, if you can maybe look up the director real quick, that'd be amazing. Which show? Uh, if you could also look up the show too, that'd be great. If you could peek into his mind, Parker, really quickly. Parker, 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 <laughs> Parker, Jason Statham, Jennifer Lopez. Um, shot in Miami. Uh, yes. Not Miami, but it was actually shot. I saw the trailer. Oh, oh you did? You were, a, you were an assassin. <laughs> yeah, it was actually Boca Raton. Bernhard, 300 feet is insane. 300 feet. That's and a I, big... And I remember I got a call from David Leach saying, hey, Daniel, there's a part that you may be right for. The director wants you to go and read. And um, I went in, and I remember that. was It was awesome. He was like, yeah, you know what? Can you just do me a favor? Can you just talk how you talked when you came in? It was the funniest thing. Like, I'm all coming, hey, how's it going? And then I go, well, it's like, uh, and he's like, no, 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 stop. Listen, John Wayne, you settle became, down. Stop <laughs> right now. <laughs> just, just talk how when you came in. I want you to be James Bond. And I'm like, okay, James Bond, okay. <laughs> and um, he goes, look, I, I like you. I want you. But you have to do all your own stunts. I said, yeah, I, I always do. I always do my own fights. It's not even a question. He goes, no, no, no. I want you to do the fall out the window. Oh my God. I was like, sure. It's 300 feet. I'm like, yeah, of course, not a problem. <laughs> so I called Dave and I said, hey, he goes, yeah, Daniel, don't worry about it. Um, if you want to do it, you do it. If not, I get us on trouble. On the day, I remember they're putting on the harness and everything on. I goes, Daniel, I can get you a double if you want. I'm like, no, I promised the director that I would do it and um, I'll do it. And I remember, have you done uh, a descender? I've done mm -mm. a descender crane. How How high? Uh, it was off a castle rampart in Romania. So how high? Oh my God, like a hundred feet or something. So same thing. Not three hundred. Well, but it, it's looking the same over thing. an edge is something. It's it's the same <laughs> thing. So I remember I'm like, well, I mean, how bad can it be? You know, listen, I'm I mean, this harness they pull me up. Your insides I'm, become I'm, your outsides. I'm going, yeah, literally, I'm going backwards. Not a big deal. And our friend Mike Massa was the coordinator, and uh, Mike goes, "All right, Daniel, for the first one, I want you upside down." Face first. I want you to see what's coming. And I remember my stomach just kind of went like, God. <laughs> I'm like, okay. So they, they hook me up. They start pulling me up. So when you do it, when you do the center, you start on the ground. They hook you up and they start pulling you up five feet, 10 feet. And describe what you're on. You're, you're what you're wearing. Smaller than your finger. If you're, you have a pinky finger, you want to look to a pen maybe. Not even. And go skinnier than that. I would say two millimeter maybe. You're on one cable. It's one cable that splits to two cables. They attach you to the kind of like higher back and lower back so you don't break your neck and your lower That's back. What did you say nice. about, the, the, about, about, like, about, a, about a pen's <laughs> ink cartridge exactly. inside the pen? So That's the wire. They start on. pulling me up 50 feet, 100 feet, and I'm going like. Was your will and testament a, fully this in is place? A real, nope. Oh, great. And my wife actually said, did you do a testament? I'm like, no, I forgot. <laughs> Cash uh, in on that life insurance. I know. And, she, and, and I look down and I go. That's a small world. These boats are really tiny. <laughs> and it's our pool, 300 feet. And then David comes up. He's on the roof. And he looks over. He's smiling. He goes, you sure you want to do it? And I'm like, 
I guess too I late I got now. the party dress on. Let's go. I'm faced out. And I just hear three, two, one. And my stomach, my, 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 my stomach just kind of goes like. <laughs> and they drop me. And the second I'm in free fall, I mean, it's not a free fall. It's, like, it's a controlled free fall. Right? But it's a free fall. Well, you have a free fall to a certain extent. And then they slow you down. You know more about this than I do. And I swear to God, I loved it so much. And I'm going like, yeah! And I'm doing Superman in the air. And I'm going like, rah! And and I just hear David going, don't have so much fun, God damn it! (laughs) You are dying in this scene. It was unbelievable. It was so much fun. I probably did the fall 300 footfall maybe 10 times wow and then they dropped me from 300 feet only to like 250 a shorter drop which when jason um was hanging on the balcony and kicking me in the head and dropped me and that got a little weird because uh, i did a head reaction and i didn't realize that there was a ledge so there was the building and there was a little bit of a ledge that i didn't see and i did a little bit too much of a head reaction and my body tilted and i get dropped and both my knees hit that <laughs> oh. God. Thank God I had heart knees on. I can't believe you did. Thank God I had heart knees on. Like wow. protection. Because most guys would go without that. Uh, I don't know why I had it on. Somebody just told me to put them on. I hit with both knees. And they saw it. And they're like, Daniel, are you okay? And I'm like, no, I'm not. And they pull me up. And my body went into shock right away. <gasps> because I just felt sick. It's not that I was really badly hurt. I just felt sick, you know, like that, that hard impact. I said, can I just have like five minutes of just take your time? I just took five minutes. I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm ready. And I went back. And then the yeah. same day, I had to do the freaking fight scene with Jason in, in, in the apartment. With oh, both With knees, your knees bruised. Like swollen. my knees went up like this. They just blew oh, up. Just ice on bro. It. But you guys know how it is, you know. That's in, heavy. In, but in our game, let me ask you this. Do you remember doing a fight scene ever where you were 100%? No. But it maybe usually seventy percent. Not even fights, you know. Yeah. 70, 75 percent. Yeah. I don't think in competition you never go in. Never. Ever, Nobody ever. trains like that's an uninjured. But it is. <laughs> it is what it is. So that was probably the biggest, craziest stunt I've ever done. Well, I that's tell you, pretty crazy. Three hundred feet is huge. Oh, I never I, done I anything still have like anxiety that. Think, I have anxiety thinking yeah. about that. A uh, hundred, a hundred foot decelerator is huge. So some yeah. of it to survive that is naiveness yeah. a little bit. Not you know because well you can't. You, you can't think about it. You cannot. Did, did yeah. you think, well, I guess I'll die if it, if there's a mistake. I never thought, I swear to God, I never thought about it. But that's part did. of, I think some of that's part of the naiveness when you, because yeah. it's your first one. You I just never, like, I was like, oh, oh this, this is, safe, is fun. But, so you're saying the key to success is just don't think. think. <laughs> <laughs> don't think. Words of wisdom it, from oh. Bernhardt. Because part of that decelerator, it, it's, it's when you're going down, you are at a free fall and then it's slowly tapering yeah. off and it gets you. And some of those, 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 uh, descenders, you take you off to six inches to the ground. Actually, your husband, mm-hmm. Stephen Dunleavy did a little descender and John Wick too. That oh, was gnarly yeah. blind. Uh-huh. And, but that, that, that was probably 25 feet, 300 feet. One little thing goes wrong with that cable. It's you're done. Toast. There's you're no done. recovery. You're oh no, just done. you're done because there's nothing underneath. There's, there's no room cement. for air. Yeah. And so, but we have the best team. <laughs> we have the best guys. And let me tell you this: I bought them dinner every day. Yeah, you should guys have. for day. at least a month. Yeah, every day I bought them dinner. <laughs> I, I was like, oh my god. They actually own your life at they that do. point. They do. Yeah, three hundred, three hundred feet. I, 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 I'm good with heights, but I'm not good with heights. Like you put me at a hundred feet, I'm like. Ooh, this is not fun. It's trust. I don't need to go that high. Yeah. At 300 feet, I don't care what kind of line you're on when you're free falling down, you know, your balls are in your stomach. Better than Cedar Point. (laughs) They might have been up by my ears. (laughs) And then clipping your knees. Good God. But you know what I loved? I loved doing the stunt. It was amazing. I got got actually nominated for a stunt award. Sick. Didn't win, but was nominated. But then that was I, the right choice. But then I won for Atomic Blonde. Yes, <laughs> well, that was amazing. Yeah. Guys, if you have not seen this Phenomenal. scene in Atomic Blonde, Bernhardt, like you are so memorable. Pretty and nasty, huh? That hair is fabulous. Blonde, like white blonde. The, the so tips. good. So good. <laughs> that so, and then right to Ultra Car, all that was excellent. Those were great, man. 
But really be, great pieces. But going back to Parker, I just want to say that that was uh, Taylor Hackford. Taylor Hackford. Oh, my God. And he actually, he was nominated or won an Academy Award for Ray. Yeah. Yeah, Taylor Hackford was amazing. Now, speaking of that, why, 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 aren't, why aren't stunts represented at all in the uh, Oscars at all, do you think? It's, to me, it's, it's, I, I don't get it. Costumes, set design, editing, sound, everything. Why not, why not us? It is amazing because, I mean, Mad Max got, what, do they, six awards? I can't remember if they're nominated six times or yeah. they, they have six Oscars for, I mean, sound mixing, et cetera, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. Yet imagine that movie without, 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 the, without action. the action. The, 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 uh, imagine any trailer without stunts. Right. There's just a, they don't exist. I mean, just, just the, the rigging uh, was done by a, a, a dear friend of ours, Kia Beck, who's just an absolute yeah, wunderkind. Yeah. He's an wunderkind. absolute wunder, Yeah, just absolute genius. Without his brilliance in the entire action team, it wouldn't be a film. It would be 20 minutes of people just running around in the desert. Even mm. then, you need an right, action team. Right. <laughs> the, second, the, the second that a, a performer goes above a walk, even a jog, that's considered action, that you have to watch yeah. them like children on a playground. So it does constantly baffle me that all these these films make it to that level at, at, at the Oscars, yet it's not even represented. I mean, there are the Taurus Awards which is almost like their their way of being like, look, you get your own show, but it's not the yeah. freaking show. They that's do. like throwing yourself a party, though. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, that's you threw your own birthday party. That's what the tourist awards the are. The tourist <laughs> awards aren't even what they used to be when they first started. It was, I heard huge. It was amazing. Huge. It was oh televised. It was yeah. amazing. All the celebrities are there. It was. It was Arnold. It Rock. was. It was a real right. celebration. Yeah. Right. Now it's kind of like, uh, okay, tourist award, and I don't mean to downplay because it it's nice to have it awards, but. It's nothing like it used to be. Right. Now it's like, okay, you guys go have your party over there, yeah. right? Which is sad. Yeah, because you know. Uh, we, so, how do you think they could fix this with the with the Academy Awards? I mean, it's probably second unit director is not going to work because of directing. But what about stunt coordinator? Right. I mean, there, right? there's there, there's the whole world out there, and I think they have to revamp the whole awards. It seems like they need a new mission statement. Yeah. And a new ethos yeah. around that whole system because right. it seems broken anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what's next for you? Um, there is actually something I wanted to talk about, but I can't. Okay. I was just told I cannot talk about it. God damn it. There's something really exciting I did, but I can't talk about it. I can't wait it. to hear. Um, yeah, it's going to be really fun. Is uh, it on HBO? Uh, I can't say. Is it, a new, <laughs> is it a new streaming network? Uh, I can't say. Huh, I interesting. Can't say. I can't say. But you can say that you just worked on... I can't. Oh, because we all where? have to sign on disclosures. Oh, I know. I almost said it to you I guys. know. You, guys. you were... Um, well, I have actually I have something coming out. I did a film with Sylvester Stallone. Uh -huh. It was actually Escape Plan Three, but now it's called The Extractors. Okay, and I uh, have that coming out. Um, then I, yeah, I'm just. Oh, I'm going back on Alter Carbon. I can say that. <laughs> yeah, I'm going back on Alter Carbon. Hopefully uh, next Dude, week. Dude, I love that. That was a good a show. Great huh? that was a run on that. Pretty program. phenomenal. You had a fantastic because oh, it was it was primarily acting. Like you, you, it was you. Well, the first actually, the first episode was um, I had a fight scene and acting, and I spoke German and English, and it That's was really right. cool. And uh, the showrunner Lita, she really liked me, and she put me in another episode, which was only acting. Yeah, That's awesome. and suddenly I'm getting the script. And I'm going like. Oh my god! Words. They expect me to prepare. Oh my god! And I mean, like, like literally seven pages just of dialogue, me rambling. What I'm an like, opportunity! I'm like, right? yeah, but I. It's scary, but oh I my mean, god, I have another good story. Makes with, you oh my god, I had another. I have another good story. Tim, Tim, with Tim. is grinning ear to do, ear right now. Do you remember? Think about it. Do you remember John Wick? First John Wick. First John Wick. Yeah, when you came up to me and you go, Daniel, you look flustered. Do you remember uh, that? So he comes up and I'm like, what's wrong? And he's, he's so angry. He's like, oh, and he's cussing in German. And he's like, they gave me all this dialogue in Russian. Now I got to learn it in five minutes. <laughs> yeah. So Chad and Dave, my dear, dear friends who directed John Wick 1, thought it was really funny to give me a last minute scene that was a whole page in Russian. And he, they gave it to me about two hours before Amazing. we were shooting. And it was actually the scene I did with you, Tate. Remember yeah, the scene? Yeah. So right before we actually walk through the club, I have this scene with um, where I like watching the monitors and I'm seeing John Wick and, and all of that. So they gave me this whole dialogue scene in Russian and expecting me to do But they were screwing with me. They did it purposely. <laughs> wait, did, wait, 
How did it purposely? But you still had to do your due diligence. Uh, but every five minutes, he's coming to me. Hey, Tim, how's this sound? I can't believe it. I can't, <laughs> be- I can't <laughs> believe they did this to I'm, me. I'm glad he went to you it. to was, see if I was, you're I was, was, I was, I was more worried about, God damn it. Why would they do this to me? God damn it. <laughs> so what did you do to prepare for that? Uh, I was Google? Uh, YouTube? No, 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 no. Here's the thing. <laughs> here's the thing. Here's the thing. <laughs> I speak German. Mm-hmm. I speak English. I speak a little bit of French. <laughs> eh, a little weird English. But Russian is so different. You cannot, you just have to memorize it. And it was too much to memorize. I just, I needed at least three days to memorize it. They gave me three hours. So what I did is I was like, hmm, I got to fix this, all right? So I started making little notes and I put it like everywhere, little notes, you know? And I'm doing the scene and I'm trying to read. I cannot read. I'm like, damn, I can't see. I, I just couldn't do it. So... There was one guy working with me who was a stuntman who was Russian. I said, you, come here. What? I put him right next to camera, and I said, you say the line, and I repeat it. So he said the line, and I repeated it. He said the second line. I was just repeating it. And I said to Chad and Dave, I said, this is how I got to do it. They're, like, <laughs> They're just laughing. <laughs> <laughs> they had such a ball. They but thought still it was to, funny. to operate under that unbelievable amount of pressure is not something that you can, the, the average human being is capable of doing, right. Bernhardt, which makes you so special. No, it was hard. It was, it was, I was pissed off. Was like, God damn it, I could have done this so much better. <laughs> and, and Tim just goes like, Daniel, you look so flustered. I it's can't like imagine you flustered. Did fine. you know? You're did you know great. it was a joke? I think they were pulling my leg. Did you know? No, I, I they really needed him to do it. Yeah, they were like, eh. but I've never seen him so flustered. And I'm just like, yeah, look, you're gonna be great. You're gonna be great. I just and had to got, figure it out. Yeah, go. You got ADR. Don't worry about it. ADR. ADR. <laughs> it was great. I can't imagine you flustered or. Angry. I was. I was flustered. I was like, uh, every five minutes. <laughs> and he's full nightclub. Music's going, and you know, getting this ads, crazy. Right? And, and every five minutes, hate. Tim, I can't believe they did this to me. <laughs> I can't. I can't believe they did this. I still think Russian. They did purposely. Can you believe that? In Russian. Can you believe it? Two in hours. Russian. God damn it! I was more concerned about telling you than stuff. But you figured it out. I you, figured you it problem out. solved. It. Yeah. 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 Um. So, in 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 kind of finishing up and bringing it to here, we we kind of want. But to I have to... so much more to say. <laughs> well, really? In the sequel, well, Daniel. You want me sequel. out of here? I, I want to hear about Neo Baby. Oh, Wait, that was what? so cool. Did you just say Neo Baby? That Neo was baby. so, I'm so glad you're bringing this up. And I'm, that's that was very, very special. That was a, an amazing, an amazing moment. So um, I have a wife. You know my wife. You guys know my wife. Beautiful. Lisa, Lisa Stothard Bernhardt, beautiful lady. Been with her for 20 years now. Actually, we had our 20th anniversary last year, which was amazing. Um, we, I did Matrix. Then, because it was such a big film, you were in two and three, right, mm-hmm. Tim? I was only on two. So, but I worked for six months over a year and a half. So the movie comes out in 2003. My wife and I are having a child. We're having a little good baby girl. So the day of the premiere, my wife and I were on the red carpet and she was full pregnant. And there's this amazing picture where I'm kneeling next to my wife holding Aww. her belly and my daughter was born the premiere was may 7th so we went to the premiere we had a limo drove to the premiere and on the way we thought we had to turn around and go to the hospital <gasps> on may 8th my daughter was born at 8 a.m oh my god the day after the premiere and people were saying it's the neo baby I'm like, <laughs> what <laughs> I'm like, she is I'm the like, matrix what <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what they really meant. It's amazing. That, oh, that's incredible. So that was really cool. Yeah, my, my daughter was born uh, the next day at 8 o'clock in the morning. Eight pounds, May 8th. All eights, which oh is funny, God. isn't it? It's the cool, infinity. Man. Yeah, the infinity. triple eight. It's it amazing. Is, it but, is the matrix. Amazing. Matrix Reloaded was pretty much the pinnacle, I mean, of, of my film career. I've never worked on a film production that's ever been that like again. Like that. It was incredible. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I just from everything from... The action team, the cast, the production itself, the directors, the directors, I, I, everything gelled. It was like it was like a dream production. Perfect, right? It, it, like we show up every single day for how many months? Like six months. Oh. It, the stunt team and the cast trained together, ate together the entire day. Best food. Best food. They had the best the best catering, food because we were you all. Cannot imagine. It's very important, the food, by the way. The it, food it, was. It, 
it was the the Matrix supermodel team, right? Because everybody's we we're measuring body fat. It became this big competition. <laughs> how how much was your body fat? I think I was like at seven what? or eight yeah. percent. I never got under ten. But Brad was like <laughs> three. Brad was like three percent. Yeah, but so some, because we it was such a competition, they made and, and because of Daniel, it was a running joke about supermodels. It's a, it became was a it? competition. Yeah, I never knew that. Then we made somebody's you wife made the beanies. Darren's wife, yeah, made the beanies that said Matrix Supermodel Team. Oh my god! <laughs> and you know what's so funny too? Um, uh, one day they found like one of the movies I've done, the low budget movies. I think it was called G Two, The Return or something. And suddenly they put like these little billboards up, like you guys did. Special screening tonight, Daniel Barnhart oh, in GT. So we put all his his uh, posters up boy, around the set. We, boy. So on a Friday night, special screening, Daniel Bernhardt. So, so we had Daniel Bernhardt posters everywhere. It was so funny. And you got Keanu Reeves and Lawrence Fishburne all looking Amazing. just part of the joke. It was well, you awesome. know his, his poster is hanging up uh, above the toilet in uh, 87. Oh, I, know, I, know. <laughs> I, I I showed up at 87 11 and I go, Chad. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean my, my poster's in the bathroom? Because he goes, at some point, everyone is going to see that. And he goes, you know what he said? Hmm. Be quiet. You're lucky you're in here. <laughs> and then he said, but you're right next to Bruce Lee and Brendan Lee. <laughs> it's true. true. It's true. It's true. <laughs> well, cool, man. All right. So finishing up here, we just want to play a little game. Okay. Is, so it's kind of like our pool. Who wins Your what? Our, our little pool. Our pool? little pool. Who wins what? Okay. Who wins what? So you're going you're gonna to problem solve for us. Okay. So... Um, can you read those? Do you know what sure. those are? So we're, we've got to do it fast. So first, tell me if you know what they are. Yes. Do you know what each one of those are? Yes. Okay. So he's going to read it fast. And you just got to, once he reads it, you just got to answer it. And as soon as you answer it, let's check so it out. So I have to answer, like he's going to ask a question after I'm going to, I'm going to offer you two choices. Okay. You're going to choose one. Yes. Okay. Ready? Yes. Game of Thrones. Never Breaking see. Bad. Breaking Bad. Bruce Lee or Chuck Norris? Bruce Lee, come on. James Bond or Ethan Hunt? James Bond. Kill Bill or La Femme Nikita? Kill Bill. The Bachelor or The Real Housewives? None of them. Good answer. <laughs> E.T. or The Encounter? E.T. I lied. I never heard of The Encounter before. <laughs> Close Encounters. Okay. Close, Close Encounters. encounters. Yeah, yeah. That was really good too, though. Perfect. Both. How, how did he do, Tim? Actually, you know, Chuck, Bruce Lee, Chuck Norris, uh, I love Bruce Lee, but I had a chance to work with Chuck Norris, and he was probably the most amazing Pretty man. dope, dude. I got a to meet him. Pretty once, so. amazing wow. man. I was, like, so impressed. But when Unbelievable. He does, when he does push-ups, the, the world actually pushes down. Right, the earth moves <laughs> away from him. Yeah. He doesn't move his how body from the earth. not be impressed by that? I had the pleasure to be the bad guy next to him, and it was amazing. I did two fight scenes with him. It was pretty cool. Yeah, what, I, I think I have fought all my heroes except for Bruce Lee. I've had a fight scene with every one of my heroes i haven't fought you yet <gasps> you doubled me i did double you, you doubled me. <laughs> <laughs> i was like why would i need a double but you know what there was actually one because i had a hard the, time his, and you did it better his kicks are fast his kicks are. Soft. no it wasn't the kicks he did his own kicks yeah. i i just did the sweeps and the falling off the truck he yeah. did everything else yeah he did all his no i did really 99.9 percent. .9%, but you did except actually, for the I, cement part in the truck that i just heard yeah. about Hey, but you know what? <laughs> hey, but you know what? That's actually a good story too. Um, I showed up on on set my first day, and I go, "Oh my god, this is awesome!" I saw a guy on top of a car going fifty miles an hour, and he's just standing on top of the car. Oh, and yeah, I go, yeah. "Oh my god, this is awesome!" And the coordinator goes, "You're next." Oh my god! I'm like, "Uh, all right, let's do it." <laughs> and guess what I did? It's actually the scene in Reloaded where. I get out of the car and I climb on top of the car. And I did that with no wire, nothing. And I'm like, all right. So they put handles on the car and a little uh, pedal for my foot. And as I'm going out and I'm asking uh, the coordinator, I'm asking, hey, um, what do I do if I fall? He goes, well, don't. Oh, my God. We're going well, 25 miles an hour, maybe. And this is before you were doing stunts. You were still just right, doing right. acting. Right, right, right. Act, yeah. Martial arts. Martial arts, yeah. And there were actually 10 cars driving behind us. You know, filming and everything. Oh yeah, you, but and you had the best drivers in the world I on had that the, freeway. The they, best on Ma like you were saying on Major Solo, the the best the cram done a cram, the best people in the world. And, and they built a freeway. We were on the Oak. We were in Oakland on oh the God. airstrips, and they turned an airstrip into the freeway. So the freeway in Matrix yeah. is an airstrip on, in Oakland, and 
all that freeway is just an airstrip, and that wow. was our cars doing yeah. all that. And I mean, it's such an epic scene. That, that was such. Well, you didn't breathe in that show no. from the minute, from the yeah. beginning to the end. It's yeah. action. You're exhausted when yeah. you finish. Yeah. That, you know? And I never, I never forget when um, uh, Agent Smith came up to me and he goes, "Hey, Daniel, I think you're the guy who actually jumps from car to car." And I'm like, "What?" <laughs> <laughs> and that's that scene where I climb out of the car, I climb on top of the roof, and then I jump, jump. and crush the cars. And yeah. That was just so damn cool to I, be part it's of pretty that. Pretty sick. Deal. Damn. Yeah. I, I mean, I've never had another movie experience like that. And I got to share that with you. Yeah. It was amazing. Yeah. But you know what? I, I have to say there was another film that I really, really loved was uh, John Wick. Because it was our brothers, Chad Sahelski, David Leach, directing their first movie starring Keanu Reeves. All of us work. I mean, all of us. It's the same Matrix team. So Basically, the you weren't my, around my, yet. My, my hubby made the cut. Yeah. Stephen Dunleavy made the cut. In the, the first in the one? Second one? The second he one. He was the second one. Yeah. But the first one, there was just something about it. You know, Chad and Dave got their opportunity to direct. And we were just all there. The whole team. Everybody worked on it. You, Keith, remember that scene we yep. did in the club? You did your scene. It was just unbelievable. We all worked so hard. That was another experience, I have to say. I was so lucky to be part of it. Really lucky. Yeah. Yeah, I and, felt the same way. And it, and it kind of, you know, Matrix was that team. And yeah. now everybody that was on that fight team, those the core, the eight core guys yeah. on that fight team. Everybody was on it. Everybody's JJ just, came in. And Darren every, came in. And everybody's either directing or, yeah. or a oh, second no, unit directing. You guys were now. all directing. Yeah. Believe me, as, a, as one of the lesser players in that show, everybody there. At one point, Darren came up to me and says, I'll be your eighth. Uh, stunt coordinator today to give you some direction <laughs> because <laughs> like three so minutes funny. earlier like seven different people had come through okay what we need to do here is when you come out with a gun and I had I had a lot of different options uh, by the time we got to film that was a great scene that I amazing. Loved. he grabbed you by yeah, the beard yeah. and he pulled you down he shot you yeah Dar head. Darren says so how how durable is that beard? I go, <laughs> then right before we, I go, I don't want to light it on fire, I guess. I, what are we talking about? He's like, just great. I said, oh, no problem. And then it was, it looked yeah. great. It looked really fantastic. Whatever they pull out, you can sell on eBay. <laughs> <laughs> I would buy it. Well, this has been so fun, man. I appreciate awesome. this so much, you guys. You know, I, I have to say, I feel, uh, I'm a little flustered again because, I mean, look. You guys, look at you guys, all of you guys. You're like the, 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 the creme de la creme. You as an actress, you as a stunt actor, you as a coordinator, actor, everything. And, and you guys are asking me questions. I guess you couldn't get anybody else, but hey, I'm lucky to be here. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> just, just privileged to be on the road is how I feel. And I feel like it's nice to be on the road with you all. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, Daniel, where can we find you on social media? Um, I, so we I, don't have to keep stalking I, you. I it gets actually, exhausting. I have one. It's called. Um, I'm not very good with it. Are you on Instagram? I am. I I'm on. It's called the real Daniel Bernhardt. And I didn't come up. I didn't come up with it. A friend of mine told me. Goes just call yourself because Daniel Bernhardt was gone. So it's the real Daniel Bernhardt. Great. But I only have. I don't have a lot of followers. I I still haven't figured out how to do you this. You will. You will. Oh, maybe it's I will. Coming, now. It's coming. Yeah. You will know. It's do you have a lot of followers? I don't know. What's a lot? You know. <laughs> Now, cool. now, homework. where can people find you? Ah, so people can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Ellen Holman and then Ellen Holman official on Facebook. So say hello to me. Hello. Love to, love to hear hello. from you. How about, how about you, Tate? Uh, I'm just at Tate Fletcher. It's T A I T is how you spell my first name and easy to find everywhere. And Tim Connolly. And mine's Tim Connolly, C O N N O L L Y, no E, at underscore one, O N E. Tim Connolly underscore one. Now, uh, some homework for our listeners, uh, bringing this back to one of the first things that we spoke about. Your homework, listeners, is to look up Blood, Sweat, and Terror. Mm. Yeah, Blood, Sweat, and Terror. <laughs> and also... I have a movie there called Fetch. It's a also, short film. It's really funny. Fetch, and then also Looking for Kicks with Daniel and I, I don't. I, I don't think it's... Uh, I've never... Well, I, this is the homework, Daniel. Yeah. I can't someone's, find, I'm, I'm, it's yeah. out there, that commercial. Someone's, someone's going to find it. But actually, or maybe Bloodsport. Actually, the, the Bloodsport 2 wasn't too bad. It was actually kind of fun. I think you can actually watch it for free online. <laughs> So you guys, if you do find these things, track us down, tag us on social media. We want to see this. And, and Fletch is worth a watch. It's good. You know, Fetch is really funny. If you want to see David Leach act, you know, David Leach now has become one of the hottest directors in the business. He's huge, but he's actually acting. He was really good in it, wasn't he? Was he was great. I can't no, wait. No. I'm going to go watch it tonight. You've never seen it? Yeah. It's really I'm funny. Watch it yeah, I'll send you a link. That's yeah. our homework Really, really too. funny. Perfect. My wife, actually, my wife is in it. My daughter is in it. My dog is in it. My car my is in it. Hell my yeah. house is in it. I'm in it. <laughs> That's how you got that big money. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, well thank you. And yeah. thanks very much. And, and this is our pilot. This is the beginning. 
So the next time, wow. we'll have more to talk about when we do a real episode. Yeah, so, exactly. <laughs> so if it doesn't go, I apologize in advance. It was probably ah. because of me. <laughs> well, now that we're all warmed up, we can do the, that we can do the real thing. Uh, I know, this is a good I practice. Know. Well, thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. All you guys much. listening, much thank you. Love. Enjoy. Please go and uh, rate it on iTunes and wherever else you get your podcasts. And uh, check us out next week for more. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. <laughs>